Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another Touch Designer tutorial. This is Owsley Williford. Today we are going to be talking about uh, creating a pixelated look. Uh, we have two ways to do that. Um, one is uh, kind of built into Touch Designer's image filters and another one we can do with a tool called the Limit Top. Um, I, uh, I've been asked about this. This is kind of a popular look, but I, I haven't personally seen any tutorials on how to get it. Um, I'm sure they're out there, uh, but I just haven't seen them, so I just wanted to do a... this will be kind of a quick one. Um, anyway, we're uh, starting from scratch here, so let's use a noise uh, as our basis. Um, Get it moving. So we have to time that seconds, uh, and then this is uh, fast is actually kind of good for this. So I'm gonna change my resolution to my reels, 1080 by 1920, uh, 720 by 1280 would be the non-commercial equivalent. Let's actually just uh, let's put a null so we can see what's going on in the background. I'm just going to leave the noise as is for now. I'm going to add a uh, threshold. We'll use that later, but I'm going to turn it off for now. Uh, and since we're going to have a transparent background at some point, I'm just going to add an RGB key before my null. If I can find it, there it is. Okay. All right, so first technique for getting this, uh, we're going to use the limit top. All right, so uh, nothing changed because nothing is on in this right now, but um, we're going to mainly work in, actually we're going to entirely work in the quantize tab here. Uh, I haven't really played around with this tab much other than to turn everything on and off and see if it changes the way it looks, and I didn't see much of a difference. So I think this is more if you're doing, um, uh, kind of using RGB values for more mathematical purposes. Uh, don't quote me on that, that's just what I think. Um, I probably should read the help documents for making tutorials. <laughs> uh, anyway, here we go. Alright, so uh, what we are going to use <laughs> to get the look is, is this tab here. Um, so there are a couple of tools in here, um, both of which can create pretty useful looks. It's the position one that's going to give us uh, the look at the beginning of the video, but I, I do want to talk about this, this value one real quick because it does create a cool look. So in both of these quantize options, uh, in our drop downs, we have these, uh, other than off, we have these three. Um, uh, selections we can make. So if we select ceiling, what it's going to do is take the uh, highest ma or maximum RGB value in the case of value here, um, and it is going to show it uh, based on the value step that we give it. So you'll, you'll see what I mean in a second, but more or less it's going to remove detail based on a priority uh, of whatever value we assign it here. So it creates this, uh, well, I'll just show you. So if I click ceiling, it creates this pretty cool uh, topographical look. And actually, just to, so you can see that, I'll slow this down. Uh, not one, point one. There we go. So, I mean, that on its own is pretty sexy. Just a nice topographical uh, shifting landscape. Um, and then, like I said, it will. What you can see is it's removing detail and grouping things into uh, these main colors based on the highest value and this value step. If we want there to be more groups of color, more detail, we want to move this closer to zero, closer to uh, no change. Um, if we want fewer groups, we can take this all the way up to one, where we just get black and white. As we bring this in, we just have three colors and 
so on as we get more, uh, or rather closer to zero. So, um, pretty cool. And then value offset, um, I think it changes what your zero value is. Uh, not really sure what uh, you would use this for um, here. There's kind of a concrete reason to use it in position, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's what the value does in the quantize tab. Um, pretty handy, lots of cool looks that can be done with that. I'm gonna turn it off uh, just so we can see what the position tool is doing. So I'll choose floor just so we can see a different option. It's really, it's kind of arbitrary unless, um, I don't know, I mean, it's, you'll see. If I choose ceiling, it's it shifts, but <coughs> it's so abstract that it hardly makes a difference. Um, I think there are other contexts in which you would need one over the other, uh, but in this case, um, they kind of look the same. So uh, we'll stick with floor for now. Um, but you can see we're looking at uh, significantly removed detail, but instead of being based on the RGB value, it's based on our uh, uh, XYZ coordinate. So, um, and let's just look at what this does. Uh, same thing happens. So we move this closer to zero, more and more detail comes back in. Higher, less and less and less. We can remove all the detail from the image. Um, Essentially the same thing as creating uh, noise but having it only be one pixel by one pixel. Yep. Um, and as you can see, if we you know, select a value that uh, it doesn't play nice with the edges, we, we're sort of left with this cockeyed um, situation here. So that this is where the position offset comes in handy on this one. Um, you can just kind of move it and eyeball it and you know, make really fine adjustments until you have something that looks satisfyingly symmetrical. Yeah, there we go. So that way, you know, you're not limited to uh, just values where the, the edges line up. Um, so you might be looking at this and thinking, well, okay, that's cool, uh, but the fact that the pixels are rectangular is sort of irritating. Uh, I don't mind it personally, but and I get it if you do. I have a feeling there's a way to change this with uh, the fit top, but uh, we're just gonna default over here to pixelate tool in our palette browser. If you don't have your palette browser open, you can find that under dialog uh, and palette browser right there. If you're on Mac, you can hit Alt L or Option L. If you're on Windows, you can hit Alt L. So let's, uh, let's pipe this into here. We're going to get a very similar look to what we have now um, in a second. So we have, uh, we have a number of different tools to mess with here. Um, we can adjust you know, only the horizontal pixel size. Uh, it's kind of cool. Um, we can turn square pixels on, so they are forced to uh, have the same X and Y size. So that solves our rectangular pixels problem. Um, or we can just adjust them until they're rectangular the way we want them to be rectangular. Um, so the way that this one works, oh, and then I guess, oh, sorry, there's also the wet dry mix. You can blend it with the original image. The way this one works is, it takes the resolution of the entire input and then shrinks it uh, to 
fit our X and Y pixel values. Um, if I back out of here and put on square, you see it forced. Uh, oh no, it didn't. Why did why do you make it square? How are you doing it? Tell me. Render your secrets unto me. Hmm. Because this is a chop export. Null three res X. Where is null three? But this should be... Alright, whatever. I don't want to make you watch me figure out why it's making it square. Anyway, the main concept in here is that it's taking the whole image, shrinking it to uh, a much smaller resolution, and then blowing it back up to the parent resolution. Um, and then I think it's running it through... Yeah, just a fader here for the wet-dry mix. Uh, and then back out again. adjusting how it uh, it's adjusting the resolution it shrinks it to based on our pixel size input here cool okay so that is the built-in one I mean I guess they're both built-in but whatever so here's our limit I, I kind of like keeping it in in tops rather than bringing in components um, if I can but there's, there's one other thing I wanted to show with this. What happened to my, to my look here? Let's see. Was it like that before? And I just wasn't seeing it? Very strange. Back to zero. All right, we'll work with that, that's fine. Um, so what I wanted to show is what happens when you use threshold. Actually, let's, let's shrink this a little bit. So this is kind of a cool way to get like uh, flickering stars kind of effect. Let's adjust our noise a little bit. the threshold. If I bring the amplitude down on the noise, we get way closer to what I'm after. There we go. So if we combine threshold and limit, we get this sort of flickering digital out of focus stars look. Um, and then what can be fun to do is take a MIDI input or something and map that to your position step here. And you can get you know, some very chaotic, interesting looks. Um, if you want a starry sky for some reason, you can you can do that here. You can tweak this until it's you know as sparse or as dense as you want it to be, and slow the slow down the movement so it's uh, you know more of a twinkle. I think that's really about it for this one, other than uh, I just want to point out that you can have some fun with throwing this top into a feedback loop as well. Uh, it creates some, some stuff. I'll just show you real 
quick, uh, but feel free to mess around with this yourself, obviously. Every time. I don't know why it rarely lets me drag a cable on my first click. Capacity parameter, um, let's set this to over, yeah, that's cool. Um, and then let's add a limit. And let's see what happens. So let me bypass the part. Oh, my noise is moving so slow, it's not really... I'm still on twinkle mode. I'm happy hunting with this. Uh, you know, try throwing uh, the limit top into a feedback loop. I've done that a few times. It can produce some interesting looks with enough tweakage. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to introduce you to these tools so that if you ever need a uh, look kind of like this, um, it's something that does get requested. You know how to make it pretty quickly. Um, of course, you can add all sorts of post effects to this, RGBA delay, bloom, you know, all the stuff I usually do uh, also looks good here. Um, and of course, I'm sure you all have your own uh, little signature things that you like to do. So, there you go. Uh, short and sweet on this one. I'll see you all at the next one. Hey, uh, quick addendum to this. I figured out how to make them square without using the pixelate comp over here. Uh, if you add two additional tops here, if you add a uh, fit top, um, just fitting it to the same resolution that you already have, and then add a transform before it, but after the limit, uh, if you multiply the, since we're vertical here, if you multiply the X value by 1.778, which is roughly the value of 16 divided by 9, um, it corrects the rectangular ratio. So I think no matter what we change our limit to here, these should stay square. Yeah, cool. All right, that's it.